before we go any further, let's close our eyes and let's have a prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, tonight is prayer meeting again. And we've had a crazy week so far. But again, thank you so much for these hours or this hour that we can actually come aside and just spend some time together in prayer meeting. Father in heaven, we come for the purpose of sitting at your feet and receiving some encouragement from your word, something that will help us to stay strong during the, the remaining course of the week. I do want to pray, gracious Father, that you'll be with those who are watching and that, th that you'll bless those who will watch later too. Father in heaven, I know that there are other requests, and I do pray that according to your knowledge and to your great wisdom, that you will answer each one of them. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, dear friends, our um, heading for tonight's study is Help, Lord. Now, I think it's so appropriate, you know, for the times that we're living in. And I have had so many people come to me and sometimes express um, concerns that maybe God is not hearing them. And maybe their faith is not sufficient. But I don't think that that is what we should really look at. It's not that our faith is not sufficient. It's not that our faith is weak. It's not that God doesn't hear us. It's not that he's not interested in us. It's just that according to his great providence, we need to understand that he is in perfect control. And I'm going to explain this as we go on. So what I would like us to do to start our study off is by turning to Psalm 12. Okay, I'd like you to go with me to Psalm 12, and we are going to be looking at verse 1. So Psalm 12, and I want us to look at verse 1. Um, so Psalm 12, verse 1, it says, Help, Lord, for no one is faithful anymore. Those who are loyal have vanished from the human race. Wow, what an what a introduction to a psalm. Help, Lord, for no one is faithful anymore. Those who are loyal have vanished from the human race. Now, when I look at that verse, it's almost quite um, disheartening because although David is crying out, help, Lord, it's, you recognize from his, the, the, the following parts of the verse that he has appealed to people to come and assist him, but he's found to his great disappointment that there isn't any faithful ones around anymore. And the ones who have been loyal to their words have vanished from the human race. Now, dear friends, you know, I'm conscious that so many times we do appeal to people, but people somehow um, do let us down. But I want you to understand that David starts off by saying, help, Lord. So what I want you to understand that just the way that he starts this whole um, psalm off is by expressing in some way that he's already been doing something. He's gone perhaps to people, but they've let him down. And he has tried to do things, but he's failing terribly. And finally, he's come to the place where he's appealing to God to intervene and to help. Now, you know, it makes me think that the, the thought is that we need to do something about the situations that we find ourselves in. So, for example, again, and I've used this so many times, 
if you find yourself in financial difficulty, it is very important that you first do what you can to try and rectify the situation. And what that entails, it means that you go to God's Word and you seek counsel. Now sometimes it's wise to go and sit, sit down with somebody who has a good understanding of God's Word so that they will be able to guide you and instruct you in the steps that you need to take. But there is something that you need to do. Then of course, once you have exhausted that kind of information and you've started to implement it and you find yourself maybe not being as strong or as committed as you would like to be, then it's very important to actually develop a um, buddy system almost where you go to people of like mind, people who are also keen to improve their financial situation and you actually um, encourage one another during the course of the day. You know, when we used to run programs to, to help people to stop smoking, we would, you know, put out adverts and people would come along to the, the, the clinics that we would provide. But the very interesting thing about it all is that we would give them the information that they needed to be able to make the choice that they needed to make, and that is to stop smoking. But the effort to stop smoking was something that they had to do. Somebody else couldn't do it on their behalf. They had to implement. But because we recognize that sometimes um, we fall back into our, our rough ways or tough ways, we would link them up with somebody else um, who had signed up in the meeting and they would become buddies. And so during the course of the day, when a person would feel that they were um, kind of overwhelmed with the temptation to smoke or something, that they would have to phone their buddy and talk to the buddy. And their buddy's duty was to assist them in just going through that moment of um, temptation, if I could use that, that moment of challenge. So what I want you to understand is that when I look at what Paul, uh, sorry, um, David is saying here, he says, help Lord. So he has exhausted what he needs to do, but now it's not up to people anymore. It's now in, he's now in need of divine intervention for God to come to his rescue. Now what I would also like us to do, to try and elaborate on what I'm trying to show tonight, I'd like us to go to Proverbs chapter 21 and I want you to look at verse 31 with me. So I'd like you to go to Proverbs and we're going to look at chapter 21 and then we're going to look at verse 31. Okay? So Proverbs 21 verse 31 says, The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. Now I'm going to use this verse to try and enhance what I was trying to say about what we need to do and then finally what we need to understand when it comes to God's involvement in our request for assistance. So it says the horse is made ready for the day of battle. So listen to that. It's not on the day of battle that the horse is made ready, but that the horse is made ready for the day of battle. So what do we understand already that um, Solomon is trying to bring out here? And that is that we recognize that we have a knowledge of problems that are lying ahead, battles that we're going to have to endure. And dear friends, you know the interesting thing about a particular battle in one's life is that it comes back to you all the time. It comes back to you until you do something with it. 
until you deal with that particular problem, it will keep coming back to you. So what Solomon is saying is that in order to be ready for that particular day, there is a preparation that needs to be done. So it's very interesting that when one looks at this, that the parts that, pl that we see here is the part of preparing. Now, do you remember when Christ went into the Garden of Gethsemane? He approached Peter, James and John and he asked them to come aside and to sit with him and to pray with him. And then he would go away and he would come back and he would find them sleeping. And then he would wake them up and he would say to them, you need to watch and pray. And then he would go off again and then he would come back and he would find them sleeping. And you know, dear friends, because of that mindset, because of the difficulty they had in actually preparing when the challenge came, which was not even a few hours later, they were not strong enough to handle the battle. But it's interesting that they had a knowledge now that this was the kind of lifestyle that they were to expect, that they would constantly be persecuted because they were Christ's disciples. So what did they need to learn to do? They needed to learn to watch and pray. Now it's interesting that Jesus in Matthew 24 counsels us very clearly that he's told us ahead of time of some of the things that are going to come on us. And then he says we need to prepare for battle. We need to watch and pray. Now watching means we need to look out for those signs to let us know what's happening. And praying is again to cry out to God for divine assistance. Now let's use Daniel as another example. Daniel becomes knowledgeable that any person who does uh, prays to any other God, but to, um, I think it was uh, Darius, I can't rem remember offhand, I think it was him, then they were going to be thrown into the lion's den. But Daniel serves only the God of heaven, and he goes and he prays to God. And it's interesting that if you go and read that section of scripture, we find out that while Daniel is praying, he's praying to God for divine assistance um, to help him through the battle that was lying ahead. So here we see that the work that Daniel did was to go on his knees and to do his homework as far as praying is concerned and to appeal to God. But then I want you to notice what the balance of that verse says in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 31. It says the horse is made ready for the day of battle. So that is that we have a work to do to get ready for the day of battle. But then it says, but victory rests with the Lord. Isn't that amazing? It means that although we do everything in our power, we need to understand that the results of what is going to happen is entirely in God's hands. It means that although we do everything in our power, the will of God will still be carried out in our lives. For example, um, we need to understand that, that although we pray for certain things, Jesus taught us to say, not my will, but thy will be done. You see, dear friends, sometimes in our appeal to God, we sometimes appeal with perhaps an agenda in mind, uh, or perhaps not really understanding what we should really be praying for. And therefore, we need to pray, Father, not my will, but thou will. And that means that we are allowing the total sovereignty of God to be um, in control of the whole request that we are making. And this is very important because it's, it's recognizing, first of all, when we cry out, help Lord, it's recognizing that he is sovereign, that he does as he pleases. 
and that the end result will be for our well-being. Um, I also want you to understand that when one considers this whole verse, we recognize that the course of history is not something that randomly happens. You know, as this kind of concept when it comes to the uh, concept of evolution, that things just evolve, that things just happen, and uh, that we just have to expect it. That isn't really what we see in creation. For example, the sun will rise at a certain time and set at a certain time. And it is placed in the, the, air, in the sky for a purpose. It wasn't just randomly put there. It was there to rule the day. And then we have the moon that was placed there, which um, we see the shape you know, coming closer to us and drifting further away from us. We see it from um, full moon to, to um, new moon. We see the cycle of the moon. And we recognize again that that is consistent. It isn't something that evolves. It's something that was done there right in the beginning with the purpose of making sure that there was something that will rule the night. And they were to govern things on planet Earth. So what I'm trying to explain to you here is that God never does anything randomly, but has a purpose in mind. And God's main purpose for us as his children, when we appeal to him, his main concern is that while he's trying to listen to what we have to do, he wants to also make sure that the ultimate purpose of our appeal should be for our salvation, that it should never work against that. So for example, perhaps we are praying for something that if we should get it, might hinder our appeal to be ready on the day that Christ comes back. You know, let me explain it in another way. In Matthew 24, we are also counseled that Jesus says, that people will be marrying and giving in marriage. They will be buying and selling. Life will continue as normal right up until when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Now you can imagine a person has just bought a piece of ground. He, he is maybe appealing to God for having that ground, but maybe having that ground is going to, to prevent him from um, RSVPing for the, the invitation that is received to the banquet feast of the Lamb. So perhaps sometimes in our appeal and in our praying, we are praying for something that if it should be given to us, will actually hinder us from being ready for the great banquet, banquet feast. So what I want you to understand is that when we cry out, help Lord, we need to recognize that part of that appeal is that His will needs to be done. So I'd like us to go in closing back to Psalm 12. And I want to look again at verse 1. When David says, help Lord, he then goes on to say, for no one is faithful anymore. Now it's very interesting that God is faithful, but he's, he's faithful according to his will. You know, there are people that sometimes, if we appeal to them, will actually help us in the wrong way. Um, there's an old saying that we need to be very careful who we um, unite ourselves to. Because sometimes in uniting ourselves to people, we might unite ourselves to wrong people. So what I'm trying to say here is that sometimes when we appeal to people and they, we need to be very careful that they're not endorsing perhaps something that we shouldn't have asked for. So let me explain. We can only ask God for things that we know is according to His will. 
But if we should ask him because we've run out of our own strength to do something, maybe what we ask him, we should first ask this, Lord, is this your will that I'm actually asking for? Is this matter according to your great providence? So when we say, help Lord, we must understand that we are surrendering entirely whatever the outcome is going to be. You know that old saying, Que sera, sera. What will be, will be. That is what we need to recognize after we've placed our cares and concerns at the feet of Jesus. So when we say help, Lord, it means we've already been doing something. But if we haven't successfully got what we want, maybe it is something we shouldn't have. But if it is something we feel confident we should have, that's when we can say, help Lord. And then we must understand, whatever happens is according to His sovereign will. He will answer us according to His sov sovereign will. Thank you.